Turns out, SpaceX restacked Ship 25 onto Booster 9 purely to say hello to the Cybertruck. Well, whether this is true or not, a week after being fully stacked, yesterday, Ship 25 de-stacked from Booster 9 again. While the separation makes us reasonably sad, this scene where workers are tapping over the connection ports ahead of de-stack definitely describes something as very big without using the word big. Regardless, Mechazilla master the de-stacking process of this monstrosity, making it seem like a piece of cake. This tower, the size of a skyscraper, activated a pair of giant mechanical arms to disassemble the largest rocket ever built. The arms carefully grabbed Starship using hardpoints under its flaps and lifted the 50 meter tall second stage and spacecraft off of Super Heavy Booster 9. Nicknamed Mechazilla, the robot lowered the 100 ton, or around 220 thousand or more pound vehicle hundreds of feet onto a waiting stand and eventually let go. So far, the purpose of this D-stack is difficult to determine exactly. The FTS may be one thing, but in my opinion, this doesn't look like just the FTS. Since there's no news on the FAA approval or the FWS review, it's unlikely to be prepared for launch. Could there be another possible reason? Could you imagine how cool it'd be to see the Cybertruck towing the SPMTs with the ship? I mean, is it even doable? Booster 9, meanwhile, remained installed on Starbase's donut-shaped orbital launch mount, which uses clamps and umbilicals to hold Starship in place to power, fuel, and pressurize the Super Heavy. In theory, the next time Booster 9 leaves that launch mount, it'll do so under its own power. But, First off, SpaceX must ensure that unprecedented power can be controlled better than before. Well, Ship 25 is down for now. I expect next week's closures are for the Ship 26 static fire. In fact, the squid was detached from Ship 26. This prototype has been lifted onto Pad B since earlier last month. Its period of dormancy may be coming to an end. In any case, we're wishing all the best for this strange prototype. Next up, here's something that we're all looking forward to most. Elon Musk gave updates on the development of the company's monstrous Starship rocket company's monstrous Starship rocket during the world's annual Space Congress yesterday. SpaceX's CEO Musk says he's hopeful Starship doesn't blow up on its second spaceflight attempt. Flight 2, as Musk calls the upcoming Starship launch, will include key changes SpaceX recently implemented to Starship. For example, the company aims to hot stage the system, meaning that Starship will light its second stage engines before the vehicle's two stages have fully separated. While the Soviet Union made use of hot staging before, Musk said it's the first time SpaceX will attempt it. I would say that's, that's the riskiest part of the flight uh, for flight two. Um, and if, 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 the, if the engine's light and the ship uh, doesn't blow itself up during stage step, uh, then I think we've got a, a decent chance of reaching orbit. Presuming that happens according to plan, Starship will make less than a complete orbit of Earth and splash down in the Pacific off the coast of Hawaii, he said. The next key test in flight will be the heat shield, so far untested. Now, we, we don't know if this, we think it'll work, but we aren't sure if it'll work. So if it doesn't work, we want it to not work over the Pacific, which is a very large body of water um, with almost no people on it. Do you want to set expectations not too high, he added. Even with only one launch under its belt, Musk said that he expected SpaceX to begin launching Starlink version 3 satellites about a year from now, depending on when our licenses are granted. That the ship, like I said, the, 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 the hardest part about this, or the part that will take the longest, is, the, is, is um, solving for ship, safe ship re-entry um, and landing. Musk said. He added that SpaceX has designed a custom tower meant to catch the ship upon re-entry. And before the space company starts attempting to catch the ship, the ship must demonstrate a few precise landings in the water. But figuring out safe and precise re-entry doesn't have much of a bearing on Starship's ability to launch satellites, Musk said. So, uh, 
you know, it's, it's actually fine to start, start launching satellites even before we solve for, for, for ship reusability. Despite the many closer-to-home potential benefits of Starship, Musk remains focused on his goal of colonizing Mars, which is the purpose that this 400-foot-tall ship is designed for. The, the, the really fundamentally, the reason it's so, so gigantic is, is that uh, if, if you're on a, you know, long journey to Mars, I think being cooped up in a something the size of a minivan would, would uh, be unappealing to most people um, is we've got to get five million tons to, to, to Earth to orbit, which hopefully gets about um, a million tons to surface of Mars. The Red Planet, which at its closest point in 2022 was around 50 million miles from Earth, is not as far out of reach as it might seem. Musk predicted that an uncrewed Starship mission could land on Mars within the next three to four years. And once SpaceX can establish propellant transfer, he said Starship should be able to fly and land anywhere in the solar system. So I'm, I'm sort of optimistic that we can take a Starship that's fairly, you know, unmodified from what would land on Earth or Mars. Obviously you need legs, um, but apart from that, I suspect you could land the Starship with minor modifications on, on the moon. And, and the same would go for once you have a propellant uh, plant on Mars, um, you could then go to the asteroid belt and, and the moons of Jupiter. Um, if you could establish a propellant plant there, um, then, um, then you could go to uh, the moons of Saturn. SpaceX will generate revenue streams for Starship development through its other missions, including periodic Starlink launches, with a version 3 expected next year, its International Space Station launches of astronauts and cargo, satellite launches for customers such as the U.S. Space Force, and Musk disclosed an approximately 26-foot or 8-meter space telescope for the University of California, Berkeley, that may itself use Starship. This revenue is not counting other crewed launches of Starship for Further in the future. Jared Isaacman plans to conclude his three-mission Polaris program with Starship, while other billionaires and space tourists, such as Yusaku Meizawa and Dennis Tito, plan separate moon ventures with the system. As these missions launch in the future, Musk plans to implement frequent Starship sorties from both South Texas and from SpaceX's leased Launch Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where Crew Dragon launches already happen. Within four or five years, Years, he predicted it's possible SpaceX could have a green field location for Starship at nearby Cape Canaveral, where it already launches its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets, capable of launching several times daily. To uh, an ocean-based like platform, um, just if, if, if you're launching, I don't know, 10 times a day, uh, that might be a bit much for even for, even for the Cape, I don't know. But uh, we, we, so we may end up doing uh, platform-based launches um, from, from, uh, from a specially designed sort of ocean-going platform. Um, but we, we, we will need to do a lot of launches. I mean, we're talking about thousands of launches per year. Musk said the incredible launch rate would be necessary to send over 100,000 tons of cargo per year to orbit, which he said is still not quite enough for his dream of Mars exploration that would require roughly a million tons per year. For perspective, the workhorse Falcon 9 rocket sends about 1,500 to 1,600 tons to orbit per year, which Musk said is roughly 80% of Earth's annual launching mass to orbit. He hopes to boost that to 2,500 tons next year. Either, either we do that or we're a single plant species for Forever. So we, we, we either achieve uh, those kind of numbers or um, we, will, we will never have a self-sustaining city on Mars. Those who remain on Earth could perhaps use Starship in other ways, Musk hinted, such as a fast way of moving people or cargo between continents on our planet, which he suggested may work out cost-wise as Starship uses low-cost liquid methane propellant. Further cost savings may be realized by eliminating pilots as the system would be autonomous, and even items like bathrooms, given that passengers would only need half an hour on board to get to their destination. So, so it really comes down to a question of, of is it economically viable compared to long-distance aircraft? And I think our, our back-of-the-envelope numbers suggest that it, it actually 
has a shot, at he said. After all, it remains unclear how soon Starship might be able to fly again. So let's focus on that first before we start daydreaming once again. And that's it for today's episode, folks. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.